In this video, we're going to talk about the common email marketing problems and the best ways to fix them. So if you're running email marketing for your company, stick around, make sure that you like this video even before we get started and subscribe to the channel because this really, really helps us a ton. If you're new here, my name is Casey Luck. I run Luck & Co Agency. We are an agency that helps seven and eight figure e-commerce brands maximize their revenue from email and SMS marketing. We see and send a ton of emails and SMS messages. And we've over the years, we've made every mistake in the book so that you don't have to. And on this channel, I spill almost, almost all of our secrets. So stick around and watch till the end. So what is the first common problem or mistake uh, with email marketing that a lot of marketers experience? It's the low open rate. And what is a low open rate? It really depends on your audience and your industry. So it really fluctuates and it's really different today than it was uh, two years ago after all of the Apple privacy changes. If you're not familiar with those, I'm gonna link a video in the corner that talks about that. But essentially, if you've been doing email marketing for a while, you'll know what a low open rate is. For our e-commerce clients, we usually get about 30, 40, 50% open rate these days with all of the changes. So anything that's like 20%, would be or lower would be low for us. If you're in another industry, 20% might be okay for you, but like 15% or, or lower could be low for you. So, you know, it really, really depends. So if your open rate is low, what can you do about it? The first thing that you need to be checking is your subject lines. Subject lines are an art and science. I always say that there are tons of things to know about subject lines. In fact, they have a whole separate video about just the subject lines in my video. Again, it should be linked somewhere in the corner right now. Go check it out after this one. But essentially what you wanna, the way you wanna be writing your subject lines is the way you would write an email to a friend or a relative or at least a coworker. When you're writing to people you actually know, you probably wouldn't capitalize every single word. You probably wouldn't do anything that sounds too formal. Um, you probably, especially with your family, will use some emojis or um, not fully grammatically correct sentences sometimes. So just getting on that more informal note with your email subscribers is always a good idea. Subject lines like that get much, much better open rate. Another thing with subject lines is you want to evoke curiosity, but you also want to include the benefit of the email. What that means is that like find the shortest possible way to describe your email in one or two words and then if you're able to add an element of curiosity into that, that's even better. So that's your tip number two for improving your subject lines. Beyond the subject lines, what else could you be looking at if your open rate is low? You should be looking at your from name. So the from name is a lot of times gets overlooked, but it's important. And it should either be, again, depending on what you do, either your company name, or if you wanna experiment, try um, like a person name, person's name at company. So for example, if my company is called Luck & Co, instead of sending emails from Luck & Co agency, I would be sending it from Casey at Luck & Co agency or just Casey Luck. So trying different variations of that could be helpful. And by the way, if your company is huge, like if you work at Microsoft and um, you think, oh, hey, like, like Casey at Microsoft would be weird, that might actually be the medicine, the pill that you need to improve your open rate. So don't be afraid to experiment with this, even if you work at a larger company and send emails to millions of people. Another thing that you should work on when your open rates are low is your segmentation. So in other words, evaluating what segments or lists you're sending your emails to. And this part gets overlooked a lot more often when it comes to low open rates because everybody is like focusing on subject lines, sometimes preview text, which by the way is also important, um, and the from name. But who you're sending to probably has the biggest effect on your open rate. And as you would imagine intuitively, the more engaged the audience is that you're sending to, the higher the open rate will be. So you know, a super easy trick to get your open rate really high is to narrow down your segment to people who, 
you know, if they received five emails in the last 30 days, they opened three or more, or they clicked two or more. As a result, your segment will be much smaller, but it will be a super engaged segment and you send an email to them and all of a sudden your open rate is 70%. So if you're just going for the numbers and you need to impress your boss, that's what you do. Uh, but of course, truly you want to find a good balance between emailing who you want to email and reaching a wide audience, but at the same time also getting good engagement rates and an open rate is one of the engagement. Uh, metrics, that's important. Long story short, work on your segmentation. If you've been sending to your whole list, stop doing that. That's never a good practice. Build a few different segments that are based on engagement. So engage 30 days, engage 90 days, engage 180 days. Um, and then engagement would be defined in different ways, such as open, clicked, um, went to the website, stuff like that. And then variate your emails, like vary who you send to, and you will see your open rate go up with time. The second very common problem that email marketers experience is low click rate. So what can you do if your click rate is low? Thing number one is to, again, as I just mentioned for open rates, is to check your segmentation. Because if you're sending to unengaged segments, that is your main problem. People in your audience are not engaged, they're not interested in your brand anymore, either because they are old contacts or because you haven't been collecting email subscribers in the proper way. Um, and so it doesn't matter what you send to them, it doesn't matter what design you use, they're not interested, they're not going to click. So check your segments. Um, make sure that you're collecting, those are actually two different points. So check your segments first and make sure you're not sending to your, your entire list and instead you're sending to segments, not lists. And then the way number two in which you would increase your click rate is you check the way you collect your subscribers. So things like doing giveaways to build your email list are never good. We've done a ton of giveaways for the clients at our agency, and we've been able to build the email list super fast, like thousands, if not tens of thousands of people in the matter of weeks, but those audiences never convert. They like barely click, they barely open, they don't buy anything. So if you've been relying on giveaways to build your email list, stop doing that. Uh, if you've been buying your email list, stop doing that. Like all of those things are not really at the surface, but they are the main reason that your click rate might be low. However, if you are collecting email subscribers in the proper way, uh, which means you're collecting on your website, so people on your website, we're presuming they're already qualified leads. Uh, they came to your website because they are remotely interested in what you have to offer. And then you have a pop-up or a form that collects email addresses in exchange for a small discount or a freebie or something like that. All of that is really fantastic. If you're collecting email subscribers in that way, you're good. And then if you're sending to segments instead of lists, that's also good. If your click rate is still low, what you should be doing is looking at the email design. The things with email design that you should pay attention to are how good your buttons are and how high in the emails they are. And this seems so simple, but I'm always amazed at, you know, I see so many emails where the button is buried all the way at the bottom of the email. There's no reason to do that. And I always tell my team and everybody we work with, try to really use the above the fold area of the email. And above the fold is basically what you see without scrolling. So as soon as you open an email, either on desktop or on mobile without scrolling, what do you see? Like that part is above the fold. Everything that's important should be above the fold. And your button is definitely important because that's the main thing that affects your click rate. Another thing that a lot of brands do, a lot of businesses do is they link their images and they think that people would click on images huh? and people do click on images, but it's really not enough. I always say that email design should be super, super clear. And if you want people to click on something, it needs to look clickable. Yes, some people will also click all of the images and like random stuff in your email as well. But what's important, like the most important link should always look like a button or if your emails are 
not designed emails, but plain text emails, like that hyperlink should be a separate line, should be easy to find, easy to spot, um, should be right there for people, in other words. And then probably my final tip for increasing your click rate is actually limiting the number of calls to action that you have in your email. Sometimes brands and senders, they try to cram a lot of information into an email and really give a lot of options to their subscribers because they think that they're providing a service doing that, they're adding value, but it's actually hurting their click rate because people, People's attention span is really low and we want simple. <laughs> People want simple stuff and they actually don't want to make decisions. So if you're including multiple things in your email and the person, the reader has to think, oh, like, what do I want? That's already too much effort. Don't let them decide anything in the email at least. Just have one call to action leading to one thing and that's it. And if your email is long, of course, include your button, your call to action multiple times, but it should all, all of those things, all of those buttons should lead to the same thing. That, and that's how you would improve your click rate. The third common problem with email marketing is high unsubscribe rates. So what do you do if you're seeing high unsubscribe rates? To be honest, it's a combination of a few different things that we've already talked about, but number one is segmentation. Are you sending to your entire list or are you sending to smaller segments? And are you really thinking through each email? And when you send an email, you think, hey, who on my list should receive this? Generally, the more segmentation you're using, the lower your unsubscribe rates are going to be. Now, there are a few exceptions and a few nuances to the unsubscription rates. If you haven't been emailing your audience regularly, and now you got like, maybe you hired an email marketing or you hired an, a team that you're working with, and they started very actively engaging with your audience, all of a sudden, people on your list are not used to that. So you will see a lot of people unsubscribing at the beginning, just because, you know, a lot of people may have forgotten about you because you haven't emailed them in a long time. Basically, pay attention to your unsubscribe rate all the time, but also account for the situation that's going on. And if there's something like that, of course, it's logical that lots of people or a higher percentage of people will unsubscribe if you change your frequency of communication very rapidly. But if you are seeing high unsubscribe rates and you're emailing your segments and not your lists, then there is something else there that you need to look at. And that thing should be relevancy of your email content to your audience. Is what you're emailing them what you promised them? And is it what they want and what they expect? Because if it's not, that's the reason they're unsubscribing. So just do a very general check and see, hey, is this content actually valuable? Do I have a really good reason for emailing my readers every time that I do? That's a really hard rule that we have at Luck & Co. Every time we email a subscriber, we need to have a really good reason to do so. It's It should never be just like, to remind <laughs> about some random thing that we've already reminded them about five times. So that's a very important thing for unsubscribe rates. Another way to reduce your unsubscribe rate is to give people options other than unsubscription. So when people click unsubscribe in your email, they, instead of just being able to unsubscribe, they should also see options to select their communication preferences. And they should be super simple. What I recommend is just one question and being like, hey, you want to unsubscribe? That's totally cool. We'll miss you, but you, your life, your choice. Uh, however, we also have these other options. Do you want to only hear from us once a month? Do you only want to hear from us when we have sales and promotions? And so give them like three or four options for communication frequency, and you will see people unsubscribing less because a lot of people who click on the unsubscribe button or link in your email, a lot of times they just hear from you too often. And you can't please everybody with how often you email. Um, so you just need to give people options. So add communication preferences to your unsubscription page in order to reduce your unsubscribe rate. However, one thing with the unsubscribe rate, 
no matter how high your unsubscribe rate is, never, never, ever obscure your unsubscribe link in the email. It should always be easy to find and easy to click. A, because it's uh, what's legal, like you're legally required to give an option to unsubscribe in every single email, but also because if you don't let people unsubscribe, what they will do is they will mark you as spam. And that is the next big topic in this video. So the final common problem with email marketing that we're gonna talk about today is high spam complaint rate. That happens when a lot more people than normal click uh, report spam on your emails. That is a very, very serious problem. And if you have it for a long time, that can permanently affect your sender score and it can be really, really high to get out of that situation. So you should follow all of the tips that we've talked about before in this video so that you don't come to this situation. But if your spam complaint rate is high, the number one thing to check is how you're collecting email subscribers. Remove all lists that are bought or borrowed or anything like that that don't come directly from your website. Um, don't like remove all types of giveaways you're participating in um, for email list or anything like that. Your sources of email subscribers should be clean, very targeted. And what that means is a, a very clear um, consent driven opt-in form on your website where it's clear that if people submit that form, they're subscribing to your email list and they know that they should expect emails from you on a regular basis. So that's what a good, ethical, clean, legal opt-in form for email marketing is. The second thing to do if your spam rate is high is checking your segments. Again, are you emailing your whole list? Are you emailing segments? And also check the cleanliness of your list. How long has it been since you cleaned your list? I should have a video on this channel that's just about cleaning your list, which we'll link in the corner. So go check that out after this video if you're having this problem. Actually, even if you're not having this problem, it's better to do this in advance so you don't get this problem. You should be cleaning your list every six months or so um, by trying to re-engage subscribers who are not engaged. And then if they still don't engage, removing them from your list. Yes, it's kind of counterintuitive for email marketing. Of course, you want to be growing your list all the time, but there's also a time to just delete people off your list. And that's one of the times to do that. So make sure that you're cleaning your list regularly. And then the final thing to check, which actually affects everything, not only the spam complaint rates, but also on subscribe rates and the click rates and the open rates is, am I sending good emails? Am I sending good emails? And is there a good match between the emails that I send and my audience who is on my list? Is that what they want to hear? Is that what they signed up for? Am I adding value with my emails? I know it's like very trite to talk about, oh, am I adding value with my emails? But really it all comes back down to the to that to adding value to sending really great content and if you look at your emails and it's not something that you would personally get excited about if you got in your inbox then you shouldn't be sending that to your readers either and every email that you or your company sends should pass that test is this email exciting would i want to send it to my mom would i want to send it to my friend um and if yes then you're doing great if not then that's the the foundational thing that you need to reconsider. Let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comments. I would love to hear from you. What questions do you have? What do you feel like I haven't covered? Um, anything is welcomed in the comments. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you see YouTube recommending other videos from our channel and also like this video because it helps us get discovered on YouTube, which in turn helps us produce more free content like this one for you. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I will see you in the next video.